change the direction that I'm going to start looking at what I want to do. <laughs> and if you're like me, you got lots of wants, don't you? But because I start my day in emotion most in these ways of getting still, of spending the time to walk with God and talk with Him in the morning. Even like the psalmist said, O oh Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto Thee and will look up. I wake up in the morning and I have lots of thoughts of what I would love to do and want to do and get to do. And then I take these moments to record the devotional time that I really do have. This is my devotional time. This isn't contrived or strived or made up or somehow created in some professional setting to demonstrate that, you know, I want to be a minister or something. Who cares? I don't, do you? But what I wanted to share was that I needed you to help me in my devotions as I go through my year of sharing all eight of these ones that I, I share with and care about and develop in my life as part of my normal devotional time that I used to spend always with God. And, and now I have the opportunity as an older man, as a wiser man, or as an experienced person in the Lord to share the same things that God had done in me with others that God is doing in them and through them. and around them and about them, to cause them to come to the same place of knowledge that maybe they've walked the same way I have, and maybe they talk with Jesus daily, and maybe they're getting excited each day as God continues to reveal himself in a new, refreshing way, in a, in a way they never thought of before. That is challenging, because sometimes it means putting aside the things that I want to do for the things that God desires to do. And you know, God doesn't force me into this. <laughs> but He does conform me. God doesn't make me do anything. But He does direct me. God doesn't stomp on me if I don't do what He says. But He does have a way of influencing. So, I like when I can have the intimate spoken word given to me at times. Sometimes direct. Hearing Him sometimes indirect by reading in his word the scriptures that would direct me today as I daily read his word or as I'm led by the Bible itself. Sometimes by circumstantial when it's not indirect word but it's the circumstances of life that God is opening doors or opportunities and closing doors and shutting down opportunities or causing and allowing those circumstances of trial or tribulation to direct me and say, hey, I need your attention. I want to show you which way you should go when you don't know what to do or where to go and what to say. And you know, the thing I like is that his directions, whether audibly as God speaks to me and I hear his voice, whether they're indirect as I read his word and I study and I say, wow, that's for me. Or as I read devotions and I go, oh, wow, look at that. That's just like me. Or as I am concerned or conformed by the circumstances of my life and I go, oh, look, there's a fire. I need to run. <laughs> which way? Oh, well, maybe I better wait and see which way the fire is going before I start running. So God uses all these and brings them beautifully, perfectly fitting my life that I can know in all of these things that he brings in my day that it's his hand that's leading me in the way I should go. So we all have that opportunity every day. God will start with you in a simple way and it may get more detailed, it may get more intense, it may get more direct, it may get more and more like a fellowship of a friend sharing with you, hey, let's go do this today. Let's go see what God might do. And Jesus might walk in you and say to you, hey, you know, I got something special planned. Let's go check it out. Some people think that I'm a nut. Some people think that I'm a 
Christian for it. Some people think that I'm a Jesus freak. Some people think that I'm a gypsy. <laughs> Some people, I have had this said, think I'm a cult. <laughs> oh boy, that's funny. But you know, the reality is, it's Jesus in you, and it's not me. It's God in me, and God in you, that chooses to direct you the way you should go. So whatever it is that God is teaching you and directing you, then He will take you to the place He wants you to be, and cause you to hear His voice, either in a devotional, or in reading the Bible, the Word of God, as you study it and as you apply it in your life, or in these devotions as you read them, the popular ones or the unpopular ones, or the ones that you enjoy, or the ones that you know, or in the circumstances of your life because it's distant, or it's something that you only know that and it's the way it's working for you right now, you know, or in some other way, maybe somebody comes up and shares with you a word from the Lord, you know, though I caution you that when it comes through some other person I'd be real nervous about it but God does use donkeys he did with Balaam and he uses people he has with Jesus he has with pastors preachers teachers disciplers with prophets with you name it but always it has to fit <laughs> it has to fit and Jesus in you said that my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they will not follow the voice of another. So if it doesn't fit and it feels a little bit off, don't go with it. But if it fits, then hear what the Lord would say to you and then do what he says. Today in God calling, eternal life. Oh Jesus, we love you and long to serve you. My children, you are to do mighty things for me. Glorious and wonders are unfolding. Life is one glorious whole. Draw into your beings more and more this wonderful eternal life. It is flow of the life eternal through spirit, mind, and body that cleanses, heals, restores, renews youth, and passes on from you to others with the same miracle-working power. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, Father, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So seek by constant contact to know me more and more every day. Make me the one abiding presence of your day, of which you are conscious all the time. Seek to do less, but to accomplish more, to achieve more. Doing is action, and achievement is successful action, and knowing me is the direction in which you should go. To know me is to love me. Remember that eternal life is the only lasting life, so all that is done without being done in the power of my Holy Spirit, my life is passing away. But all that is done in the Holy Spirit my life is undying. I am your healer. I am your joy. I am your Lord. If you bid me your Lord, I will come. Did you not know that I am here with you always? What noiseless footfalls I draw near to you and I stand waiting for you to call upon me, to call my name, for I am the Lord your God, and I am standing in the midst of you. Your hour of need is the moment of my coming. I wait, bidding you to speak the words with which I can come, and all you need say is, Lord, speak to me, come to me, help. Could you know my love? Could you ensure my longing to help? You would know that I need no agonized pleading. Your need is my call, and I stand waiting to hear your voice. Today, if you are in need and you don't know the Lord in an intimate way to look to him first in everything, Then call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. It's not just for salvation, for salvation from your sins, but it's salvation for all your situation that you might find yourself in. Remember, call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved.